This series of lunchtime conversations intends to capture insights from some of society's thought leaders, given the unprecedented times we're living in. It's the 27th of May and the orderly scramble to reopen the UK is underway. Part of my role at Warwick University is to make sure our education programmes remain relevant and continue to serve the needs of society. To do this, it's important to be part of the research and industry community. The people that I will speak to in this series form my professional network and I rely on them to inform and help steer our educational offerings. We've seen seismic shifts in all areas of life. The extraordinarily pervasive nature of COVID-19 and will have lasting effects. To discuss this, my lunchtime guest today is Sarah Ellis, the Director of Digital at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and Claire Green, Creative and Digital Communities Manager here at the University of Warwick. Welcome to lunch. Now, had this been back in the days when social distancing wasn't a thing, um, I would have been excited to have lunch with Sarah and Claire face to face so I could find out what digital meant to the Royal Shakespeare Company and how we might better connect internally with our innovation group and what opportunities might be generated collaboratively for steering our programmes, for content, learning about delivery, possibly even delivery in both directions, learning about engagement, opportunities for students and possible research projects. Although I might not have opened with this. Um, Sarah, Theatres have been one of the hardest hit sectors and that the, the, yet the creativity of the theatre community being one of the most resilient and uplifting during the pandemic. When you reflect, what are some of the key moments? I think the key moment really was the, um, when we had to, you know, when society had to lock down. And I think that was a very real, very live issue for everybody. Um, and and really since that moment about how we have all as a community, whether that's our artistic community, whether that's the people that administrate within the company, um, have all had to deal collectively with such a seismic shift and way of working and culture um, that's so immediate. I don't think that uh, as a society we've encountered that before. Um, and I think you I think it's remembering and uh, the biggest moments are remembering the humanness in all of this, actually, um, and that it hits people at different points and and knowing and realising situations. Um, it's also about agility. So those moments where um, parts of your community may be able to act more quickly than others. Um, some may need significant amounts of process and health and safety um, considerations and, and learning what they are and working in that safely. But also there is, um, you know, uh, there are moments of lightness in that too and, and giving space for that. So undeniably, the most significant memorable moment will be the moment where we had to stop, stop our shows um, indefinitely. Yes. And now it's about preparing to get back um and but making no assumptions around that um and that's quite a profound change and i think it is the connection of the humanness that is is the driver with all of that and that's why you are seeing amongst the artistic community in multiple ways this r sort of response that has been about the work and about yeah. getting story out there and the work out there and how important that is to the mm. lifeblood of theatre, but the, the lifeblood of the arts more more generally. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, thank you. And Claire, um, you span the university world of research and education, um, and you do this by the means of innovation. Can you outline yeah. your role at work? And from your general perspective, do you see what Sarah sees, has seen from her perspective? Do you see it echoed? Do you see it across the other creative industries? Yeah, though, um, so my role within Warwick is to kind of look at um, different opportunities for kind of students and graduates and, and um, academics to engage with the creative and digital sector. So um, in Leamington Spa and Coventry and Warwickshire more widely, we've, we're recognised as a creative cluster that's one of the largest outside of London. 
Mm. So it's looking at how we can, um, within Warwick, support that uh, creative cluster, uh, make us a kind of an attractive place for people to come and study and work and live, um, but also what the sector needs broadly uh, in terms of support and profile to make that happen. So it's about people and place, essentially, um, and how innovation and kind of digital um, plays a massive part in bringing those people together. Mm. Um, And yeah, I've seen different uh, sectors within the creative industries are, are facing different challenges, really. So there's been some um, some sectors that are largely based uh, around live events um, and about uh, broadcasting or documenting live events, you know, similar to the Royal Shakespeare Company. Um and so there's been challenges around furloughing a lot of staff and, and having to go through this transition. Um, but like one of the sectors that I've worked really closely with is the games industry. Uh, and actually, with lockdown, people are at home playing games, downloading games, downloading content immediately and the teams have kind of immobilized quite quickly to work from home and and that sector is actually um is you know kind of quite buoyant within within lockdown so i think across the creative sector there's no um one size fits all um and we're all dealing with this new digital kind of world and new way of working that yes. there's there's learning all over the place um yes, and both of you got quite a strong sort of uh, you've got both got a strong digital background obviously you're director of digital and digital and creative industries uh, uh, would I be right I mean you you guys are kind of already ahead of the game and understanding some of the possibilities so you maybe in some cases were already operating um quite substantially in this space this digital space uh, I mean the, the 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 RSC has it have you what what digital activities were you already embarked upon that have kind of been accelerated um, and taken up because of because of the current situation? I, I think Claire's absolutely right about the convergence of technology companies that are very fit for what I would call fit for purpose in these circumstances. And um, we've worked in partnership and collaboration with many technology companies over the years and found that a great source of um, uh, a great source of inspiration about how we can look at new ways of working but also look at the work in a different way for a different audience potentially or or or, or make our work in a different way and how we give artists a new toolkit to work with around live performance and theater so um we've we've held on to those relationships really strongly at this time and and their solidarity with us has, has been tremendous um and as i say i think those 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 foundational principles are really super, super important at a time like this because, you know, this this pandemic will affect different industries at different times. The pendulum sw- swing of impact will be different for a research organisation or a university. It will hit at a different point, and and there'll be a lot that we've learned in the immediate um, moment of impact, um, and that will happen later. And I think with the tech industry as well, it is doing well. But we must never assume that that is a constant. Um, yeah. But 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 what what that allows us to do is that we have um, this foundation that we can work on that that we can look at new ways of working and adaptation from quite um, close proximity with a uh, with tech companies and 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 hopefully through this that will create an accelerated form of disruption that I mm. think might help some interesting adaptation and ways of in which our work can work and that's not to take away from the very immediate concerns we have whatsoever Mm. and that's Mm. it's it's how you balance that that right now with respect Mm. how long ago did you lay those foundations Sarah to because I think you were one of the first really um companies to to kind of build those partnerships with creative tech companies weren't you yeah um we we started over 10 years ago I think and mm. it was all, the curiosity and, and the work was, was already happening at the RSC and and uh, I, I sort of built a culture I think around collaboration being the best form of practice because we don't want to become a tech company we're a theatre company and that mm. that's true to our hearts but um, 
I have found that a way that we can create um, organisational buy-in as well as as the work, and and uh, it's a model that I really, I think we've cultivated over time, um, and it is a sort of you've got to match where the organisation is and what it wants to do, and and with the, the the right company that has an interest in you and its and can see its own benefits as well. So it's an equitable relationship. Yes. Um, but it's a way we've cultivated for a long time, and and I think it works. Um, I know one of my previous. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I know that one of my people. I know that one of my my previous guests, Steve Street. I know that he's you know he subscribes to the Marquee TV, and I guess that's that kind of platform. Um, yeah. Must have found a, a huge growth recently, and and do you think that will sustain? You know, will, will that will that keep going or? I think there are no. I'm not the expert on this, but I think there are general rules around repetition of behaviour, and if you do things long enough, then they become part of your everyday, you know, everyday connection. Yes. Um, I think we will see probably a more blended economy and a more mixed economy around our content. Uh, we will probably think about this work at Origin more, more, um, mm. and platform more uh, as we move forward. Um, so I think there's a really interesting um, look at we we won't know how audiences will respond to to the immediate um, challenges that they're facing, actually genuine, real challenges. And we have to really sit back and listen to that and work together to hold space, whether that's live or digital. Um, but I think that we that some things will be transformative. Um um, because I think it's it's such a collective moment globally. Like yes. it's, it, I don't think we've ever seen such a a collective moment of change and adaptation for everyone in everything they do in their daily yeah. lives. It can't not have some for, form of long term impact um, mm. for us. We just don't really probably know quite yet how that will land. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I love working at the uni because, you know, we're expected to take this kind of longer term view um, and the, the essence of research being that you don't know the answers yet. You know, that's that's the that's the point of it. And um, so from from the, the research agenda and from, from the topics that we, we have a look at, what do you think and um, where can the, u the university play a role in researching areas that have longer term interests that for for sectors like yourself or, or actually just societal changes what do you think is the the kind of big areas of uncertainty that need to have attention with that kind of longer term view i think there's a big piece around do not assume everyone has access to te technology so as much as we see this accelerated growth it will be very interesting to map genuinely how accessible it is yeah. Um, I think in any any form of accelerated disruption, there is an inequity that can occur. Um, there's a big question around diversity of voice, diversity of audience in its broadest sense. I think, again, we can call, pull back into our tribal uh, mm. ways of working. How do we remain cross-sector? How do we remain collaborative? How do we remain open at very challenging times? Mm -hmm. uh, are really important things around the research principles uh, mm -hmm. because ev evidence yeah. is a very very helpful ballast and anchor point to to work with uncertainty I think but asking the questions around um, provocation is is I'd say quite important that we we ask ourselves difficult questions in the research so we're yes. not asking we're not asking to infantilize success points but we're actually asking questions around do we have skills in the technology sector that can translate to non-gaming environments? Do we genu genuinely have that? Um, yeah. Do we do we have enough resource available to do those those things in those spaces? What are the cultural shifts that we might need to take as a sector to ch mm. achieve that? And how do we enable a sector to do that confidently? Mm. Um, yeah. Those are the research questions that I think are interesting. Mm, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and and Claire, and, and uh, from your position, kind of brokering that relationship between um, industry needs and maybe some of um, university um, opportunities and what it's able to contribute. But also, I mean, the university is going to learn so much from. I mean, so often 
so often theatre is such an inspiration for developing new learning experiences and mm -hmm. um, trying to understand that better to learn from that so that our um, educational offering and our learning becomes as engaging as it can be and um, given all the opportunities as they're evolving. How, how will you in 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 practical terms, how will you broker these relationships and what? how can people get involved and be part of it? Gosh, I think um oh, Claire was that a question for you and I jumped in for both of you no right <laughs> okay. I said, oh gosh I'm so sorry you go Sarah you go first that'd be great I, I think the closer sorry just very passionately about this I think the closer academics are to practice in industry the better mm. yeah that's what I think and more thank dialogue you. we have the that's better right. thank you <laughs> and that's, back, I think back it's about there. <laughs> I think it's about open exchange, isn't it? It's about exchange, that knowledge transfer, because industry are kind of um, very agile. They're kind of learning, um, certainly within a theatre environment, it's project by project or play by play. And um, so that's that kind of agile nature of being able to kind of learn, reflect, do, learn, reflect, do. Yeah. Um, is something that not necessarily in an academic world is that flexible. But having having a kind of a conversation, having a flow of that of that knowledge and that and that um, kind of learning is really important. And, and you've got uh, and, spaces as well to you have space itself to. Yes. Yeah, so we've um, we've secured funding to to create two creative workspaces, one on campus. So that will be very student and graduate um, focused and yes. looking at kind of um, idea generation, uh, skills development and kind of um, building into those kind of talent um, areas where where you need to kind of grow whilst you're still kind of on campus in that sort of safe environment. And then a space within central Leamington which will house up to about um, 30 uh, business people uh, within the creative industries. And we will support them through business support and mentoring, but also having kind of live sessions to inspire them and and kind of look at new areas, future trends and kind of innovation. Uh, so mm -hmm. there'll be areas where industry and academics will be able to kind of come together and be in that. So those safe spaces to kind of learn from each other. Um, I, it was interesting, actually, I was reflecting back because I used to um, I was a board member at a theatre company in Cambridge and they used to do a, a load of training. Um, and I think at the moment where we're sort of getting into leading our courses and our delivery online to to kind of learn from theatre and delivering mm -hmm. uh your you know your passion through a screen through a box you know is such a difference you must find this Mary where you're you're used to kind of feeding off the energy in a room and mm -hmm. you've now got a square box to to do it so I think even from the very practical level of having theatre professionals talking and actors kind of talking about delivery and getting your message across telling a story these yes. things will be really important for us moving forward. Mm, yes, yeah, I mean, I think there's so much to learn about, even understanding just the complexity of engagement and and emotional sharing um, and, and being, I think, in being bold enough to be a little bit um, vulnerable and open to be able to mm. create that engagement. Where I think in the classroom you don't have to you don't have to go there if you don't want to, but I think um, online if you would like to generate engagement, I think you probably do have to consider going there if you really want it to be a, an engaged and um, mind um, shifting experience that challenges preconceptions and for people to internalise what they make of it and make meaning from the experience, then I think you probably do have to go there with a little bit of vulnerability, um, which I think is 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 um, not always the case in, in a classroom environment um, mm. when you have people in that room. But That's yeah. so interesting, yeah. Mm. I think, Sarah, I've got a question from you from Time. Um, Time is um, one of one of um, the students on the programme, on the master's programme, so um, I'm asking on her behalf here. Um, but she'd like to know, and I think you maybe have already touched on this generally, 
but the the collaboration between game companies um with things like i mean animal crossing and minecraft and these kind of gaming companies and and the arts and culture how what's your view on that collaboration are you um as soon as you talk about collaboration very quickly afterwards there's a kind of an understanding of what do both parties get from it how do you view that how do you enter into those partnerships if you enter into them i think you have to start with a question so you start with a provocation and you start well what would we like to do what would we like to explore and then you look at the people that might want to explore that with you for a different reason or have a different purpose around it. So, you know, whenever you go into collaboration, it's never a, a sort of um, short term or, or not thought through sort of approach. But, for example, our collaboration with Intel for the Tempest back in 2016 mm -hmm. um, was really clear. We'd seen some work they did um, at a, at, in a consumer electronics summit in Las Vegas in 2013 and we were really inspired by what they were doing they were pushing the boundaries of their technology they were trying to tell a story with that and and we were like actually we would like to look at that for the Tempest and and that that literally cold called the custom service website but that started a five-year relate yeah a five-year and a continued relationship actually um but how we got the collaboration working and this is the challenging times that we're in now is that they came to Stratford and they spent a week with us together and mm -hmm. we 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 ate together we met together we spent time together and I think in the digital space all the zoom calls we're on now is breaking through the sort of to-do list and update and actually getting into how do we be together in these virtual spaces yes and and I think that the person who came up with the concept of, of what we did was a person from Intel who just sort of said, do you know, we have enough real time processing power to rend, render a digital avatar in real time. That's not theatrical language, but because yeah. we spent <laughs> time together and distilling that as people mm. and as practice and had to respect that, we were open and we explored that. So, mm. so collaboration isn't easy and it takes time and it's about people as much as ethos around companies and stuff um and we saw work together we had, we formed cultural reference points with each other yes. and, and such like um and that all helped and i think made a sort of more meaningful connection so in terms of collaboration not every collaboration is right you don't homogenize it at all um and and there should you know should and could be brilliant things that are really successful right now that you just go that's not quite right for what we do um mm. but sometimes you have to go it's not quite what right for what we do now but there's something interesting in there do you see what yes. I mean? so about that openness yeah. mm. I think I, I hear from that you mean that when you do the I hear in that collaboration that it's not like you bring the expertise of theatre they bring the expertise of technology there's some kind of transactional exchange and and then that's it shared cross fertilized off we go you know it seems it does seem very much that you create the space to have the the discussion in between um and there's a sharing of expertise on both spaces i feel the you know there's so maybe the ability for them to have created a story using technology is something that i mean clearly theater you're the storytellers but then maybe there is some expertise about how to yeah. create a story and and to learn back over that way so uh, that, that, yeah, it does sound truly collaborative um, to have m value from it, to make it a meaningful exchange. Um, yeah, very nice. And um, Claire, I guess, do you do you reach out to companies to, because clearly the Royal Shakespeare Company cold called and made that relationship. Mm. How do you see those relationships generally being made? Or, or is, it, is it really, is it really kind of, just lots of different examples many different strands lots of different ways of doing it well so I think I think having a network is really important so I think quite often when you're working in the arts or the creative industries you have your you have your network and you kind of you you fish in that pond and you kind of know those people um so what I'm really passionate about is trying to kind of expand that network, make connections that where people wouldn't necessarily have met uh, without those connections. Uh, so even within Warwick, I'm really keen that we broaden out our 
our sort of view. So I'm working with the conferences team and putting them in touch with a VR company to kind of see how we can work differently in these times, like coming out of this. So, and it's, there's, because almost anything is possible with this technology, but it's almost the creative ideas and the the vision uh, and being able to apply it in a different way um, and to look at accessibility and, you know, and the environment and think, well, do people have to kind of travel to see a conference facility or, you know, do they have to travel to come to an open day at Warwick? Yes. You know, how can we challenge these things and and make those connections uh, with with people and relationships. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, these collabor- collaborations start with with sort of a spark of a really good relationship. And that's that's where I work. I work at that kind of that that early sort of sparking uh, moment and mm-hmm. and seeing where that kind of unfolds. Um, yeah. And that's what really excites me. Um, I think, Sarah, you you made the point about accessibility, and I think that's you know, um, because we've got to always be mindful that people can access. So it's not a those who have and those who have not. And then working with someone as big as Intel, you know, they have that. Um, so I think those partnerships are really key and having those kind of common uh, understandings about what is what's um, what's right. Sorry, here's my daughter. <laughs> 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 yeah I think the joy I think of working at home yeah absolutely I think inclusivity accessibility I think that's you know that I've, that's something that's coming through and I think not without its opportunity you know so access for somebody who may be housebound into uh, the art space of course through digital doesn't it's not always a negative impact that this may have um, <laughs> and sometimes you know there are opportunities to pick up on but certainly something that's worth that needs to be tracked and 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 moving away from something that is you know that is moving away from threshold levels to make sure we're doing what we must do to to be in a position where we really are working towards um, more inclusion and embracing that community that has has kind of almost been reignited or certainly grown that that sense of community um since we since we've all experienced the shock of this pandemic and um, i i i should let you go shortly but i do want to ask sarah one more question just around the sort of the, the data side and um, when you um one of the advantages of things being digital and online is that ability to see um how people are engaging and viewing just by tracking um do do you use that in that way or is that something so do you sort of make advantage of the fact that you can do a b testing and you can um be clever with work seeing what works and then stop doing it and modify it or or do you rely on the more traditional methods of the critic the review the um the feedback that you might capture in other ways has it has well. it informed um, I'd love to say uh, it was, all, I mean, it, whenever you're doing something new and on the edge, it's very hard sometimes to mm. um, place sort of measures, if you know what I mean, at the beginning. Um, but it is, we, we, but we, I think we're doing that more than probably we did a few years ago because it's mm. changed. The, the, it's not disrupted. It's not such a disruptive act anymore actually mm-hmm. now it is about the evidence and the research and the understanding the personalization of audiences um having more access to a direct access to our communities and understanding that i'd argue there's lots of um measures of what might be a success um and that's a very broad catalog yes. of parameters for us um <clears throat> uh, the critics are one community within that but sales are another but actually sometimes the act of doing it was the important piece and maybe a few years later it's the significance of that that comes back to you so it's not mm. always immediate um evidence that you get <clears throat> um yes. uh so so there's lots of parameters in that what we're trying to do is um particularly right now in the in the in the time we are in now which for me is day one of r&d we're in R&D right now for our work um, as a sector, as a, as a, as a, as a you know, community. Um, 
and by approaching it in that way, we are trying to gather and listen audience research and evidence as much as we can so we can we can find those touch points and meeting points um and i think that um that we not it's really important to have the audience at the heart of what you do because i think ultimately the work then connects with that audience um and if they feel that they haven't been listened to uh it, it shows it really shows so I think we're getting better at that all the time but there's also another there's a there's an artistic rub against that as well which is super interesting mm -hmm. uh, around how do you it's a bit like the the whole debate around AI is how do you you know when is it how is it a creative act if if it hasn't got that jeopardy or that agency of yes. untapped so so I find it super fascinating as a whole uh, value-based piece really mm -hmm. um yeah. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. And um, I get I guess thank you both very much for sharing these insights. And um, for me, you know, they are enormously useful. They'll help steer education programs, possibly research projects, taking them forward. Lots of food for thought in there for our for our current research students, particularly time. I hope she appreciates that you've answered directly her question for her research, but um, <laughs> data for, for other students possibly to use. Um, and for the wider Warwick community, these insights are so valuable and, and, and great to hear at this time particularly. So thank you very much indeed. Um, anybody listening who'd like to hear more um, from Sarah um, or from Claire, um, either drop me a line or you'll find certainly find Claire Green on the Warwick website. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, just follow the link on the closing slide. The series will also be made available as a podcast. Just search Insights Over Lunch on your preferred listening platform. Um, and thank you both very much for taking the time to do this. And um, if you haven't already had it, enjoy your lunch. Thanks, Thanks. so much, Mary. Bye. Bye-bye.